is in case of US and developed countries, not in developed countries, not in case of Bangladesh, of course. But uh, it might happen that nowadays we are going to Saudi Arabia, other countries sending our labor force. But time perhaps coming not very far away that this foreign artificial intelligence will take out our jobs, skip up our citizen doing jobs, particularly white collar jobs. What is your comment? Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, uh, first of all, uh, as you said, every industrial uh, revolution had its impact. So this is the fourth one. So there were times when the first one, the second one, even the third one, uh, everybody said that in the very first one when engines and other things came out or the guy who used to pour coal in the engine, so when the, it was not needed, so he well, he and what happened to his family, they found out something else. Human beings are like so crazy. I mean, they find out, always they would find a way out. I was reading a book called Guns, Jumps and Steel, where the uh, author was explaining how and why civilization and human beings flourish differently in different parts of the world. For example, uh, they were trying to say that in Africa, uh, predominantly 100,000 years before they found human civilization. In Polynesia, which is like in Asia Pacific and Papua New Guinea and in Australia, they found it like 13,000 or even less time. But if you now look at that in Africa, it's still compared with full respect to them. They have their own lifestyle. I mean, we, we define development like U.S. is developed, Africa is not developed, which is I personally don't believe because Africans, they still find, yeah, I'm going to go hunt the Bushmans. I'm going to go hunt and eat it. That's their way of life. But Americans think that, oh, I'm going to go to a superstore and all frozen and packed. So they call it development. So I'm not going to go there. The point is uh, to answer your question is that every uh, industrial revolution had its uh, impact, side effects. Human being always manipulated around it. So I don't see there is a uh, very uh, immediate uh, threat to white collar, or blue collar, whatsoever. But so coming back, as I take the opportunity on AI, uh, I was grown up in the 80s, so I had a fantastic childhood, and I loved Knight Rider. The car could talk to the guy. Uh, 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 David Hasselhoff, the guy was, so the car could talk to him. And I was so fascinated, if ever in my life, I, if I can talk to any of my gadgets, now I can, and let me talk to my gadget. Just uh, one minute. Uh, okay, go so I'm just gonna take a little time. How's the weather? Just a second, Sundar Pichai was correct. Okay, go go. How's the weather in Dhaka? Currently in Dhaka, it's 87 with haze. Today, there will be thunderstorms. Forecast high of 86 and a low of 75. Thank you. I just talked to my gadget, so my childhood dream is absolute reality now. So this is just a tiny bit of thing. Even if I walk 10 minutes faster for a continuously, my phone gives me notification. 10 minutes workout has been detected. Simple. Even my phone and when I'm going to sleep, they tell me that you are off 1500 calories today. Because normally, so AI is around. Very simple. I'm just, I'm just being very simple. But what do I want out of it? So if I, if I may, a little bit, that uh, there are two very interesting things is coming up around AI. One is assistive lifestyle and that will come from predictive analytics. Prediction. We can predict because I can predict what's my friend going to react to this gift or that movie or that thing because I know him. I have interacted with him and that's the thing that uh, I was telling about big data and then I was telling about smart data. So what I'm trying to say that there are a few things that human beings need to be uh, rescued from. We don't need, we are, we are superbly, superb engineered device, we ourselves. We are defined to actually go to space and different, different other places on separate dimensions rather than picking a box from warehouse to something else. We were designed to do something greater, that's what I believe. It is taking a little time. AI is here to assist us there. It will help us from this all these very monotonous, very repetitive world, so that we can, human as a race, can concentrate on the next level of thing. Now coming back, uh, I want AI is quite interesting. I find it even art. What happened in the bathroom this morning? I want my commode to take care of it. How is that? In the bathroom today, I peed, and I did the number two. My commode is supposed to know, experimenting those stool and those urine, that what was my health, what is happening, is there any cholesterol, is anything is happening, that's what my commode is supposed to tell me. Because nowadays, if I have to understand those things, I have to, then I have to 
to go to the doctor, then I have to take a cup, then do that, it is very embarrassing, do that, then put it in, the lab report next day. People after 10, 15 years will laugh. Oh, for this blood test, for this urine test, for all these things, you used to go to hospital, then do, oh my God. That's what they're going to tell, because my comer has to analyze all these things, and then, now, it has supposed to tell me, Shukhan, in the lunch, you must eat that fiber more today, because I have just checked that is not correct, that is low in this. That is what AI is pretty helpful. On the contrary, I want AI to tell me, I'm just saying from a consumer point of view, I'm a business development and marketing guy, I'm not a tech guy, so I have no idea how the data is being managed or what goes on inside Oracle or what goes on in an NVIDIA chip or something. I have no idea and I don't want to learn that. So what I'm trying to tell, I actually want my phone to tell me or the devices, wearables and everything, to tell me that and in predict that I'm in Shunargao on a Friday, uh, Saturday where I'm supposed to be somewhere and I'm supposed to be with my family. I want my machine to tell me, Shukhan, you are supposed to be home, not here. So that's how I see AI as a very fantastic tool. Now having said that, I came onto machines and I fell in, fell in love with machines in the Navy. I was in the Navy and in 1999, we were taken for a tour inside a very advanced ship, which is BNS Bongamund, which is one of the finest ships and which had helipads and everything and all the guided system. We had a class uh, in uh, air, uh, empty aircraft gun room, we were being taught. And I was, the, for the first time, I could stand sitting inside a room, there's a screen in front of me and my instructor tells, Shukhan, anything you want to log, I was on the corner of the channel, anything you want to log, just log, sir, log. So I was, there is a thermal camera, there is other infrared camera. And I was just in the channel, I was trying to lock a, uh, what the camera, the champagne, Chidame, that was crossing. And I was locking that, and my sir, instructor was smiling. Shukran, why don't you lock that crow that's flying over the champagne? So there was this tiny, and I locked it, and the gun, entire big tons of gun was moving with this. That's like 20 years back I'm talking about. The new states are UAV, unmanned aerial vehicle. So why, what I'm telling sir about regarding jobs and everything, did all these assistive jobs, all these things, people reminding operation, meeting up, say that, other things, these are gone. So the people has more time to concentrate on others. We have 13.6 billion years, normally if I can, am, am I correct, that, that the universe is in place. We have been, uh, we haven't explored anything. It's still going to Mars is like pretty, uh, wow, such a big deal to us. Okay. I think the pace of change is pretty fast. It's happening so superbly. AI with all this predictiveness and all these things is here to support us in a big deal. Having said this last thing that I want to mention, still we are doing some funny things. For example, carrying a phone in one hand, occupying one hand, which is diminishing 50% of my capacity, physical capacity. We are all carrying a 5 inch, 6 inch device and one hand is, oh, I have seen people falling on the road and other things because both hands we can keep balanced. We are always keeping one hand. So this thing is not smart. It will probably move into wearables and then inbuilt something. Neurons on something. That's actually going to happen because I'm not designed to carry something all the time. For example, you are not carrying these two phones. You are, all your brain is, oh, I have to take the phone after I'm done with the thing. This is absolutely unsmart thing to do, though we call this thing smartphone and everything. Now coming back, I work with strategic projects or projects that is for the future. Sometimes people do not understand future. So that's why people react on a different manner. But having said that, recent Facebook uh, scandal scared me a lot because data, what I'm doing, what I'm texting, what I'm saying, how is my health, my health doesn't matter. but uh, Tim Cook's health in Apple, it matters that one simple information can drop their share price a lot. So machine will probably know that his health is not well and if somebody can hack into that information and everything. So it comes with give and take, it's for the industrial revolution, it's eminent, it's going to happen. But for a country like us, I really agree with Aman Bhai that we often, we are on the, uh, not at the uh, front of the race, we are at the back. But a lot of our young people, a lot of our senior people are thinking about it. We have sent a satellite last night. So I am an optimistic person. I always blog about optimism. A lot of people make fun about me that, come on, you are one of the poor countries. Why you talk about hope and everything? Because hope is what differentiates us. So I truly believe if we start uh, thinking on it, if we start acting on it, machines, humans, us, poor, rich, we can live together. And 
jobs, new jobs to create. Thank you, sir. So, thank you, Shukran. Uh, this is very important because if we do not allow our data to accumulate somehow, because we do not accumulate our data, we even do not keep our prescription, how do in future we we'll design our drug for our own purpose? A man specific drug design, man specific treatment, how can we do it? So, this is a challenge in the both way. It's a paradox. <laughs> If you don't give your data, then your personalized medicine, personalized things are running. On the other hand, you have to compromise something. Sorry. One thing. Another thing is that I think you can touch this area. As Pinocchio said, that this AI might create end of human race. So, what do you think? Do artificial intelligence is going to destroy humanity or human beings or human race because? <coughs> This artificial intelligence is certainly going to surpass human brains because we work individually in most of the cases, but sometimes in groups. But when we talked about artificial intelligence, there, this. So next come to Mr. Sulaiman. You know, what is your comment in this thing? Sir, two minutes. Thank you, sir. sir uh, there is a book called The World is Flat by Thomas L. Friedman where he explains that how this uh, internet uh, and all these things actually made the world really flat. I mean, there is a huge thing in the Middle Age that world is flat around. It's not that thing, I'm metaphorically speaking. So uh, I think uh, this internet, IoT, AI, all these things are opening up new opportunities for folks like so called underdeveloped part of the world. Now, any guy, I know a uh, freelancing company from Jashore handles NBA, National Basketball Association, all these things in the uh, United States. So I think this has actually opened up opportunity for a uh, lot of other, like this continent, this region, in South region, all these places. I can see somebody from Kathmandu, somebody from Pokhara, somebody from Ahmedabad, somebody from Manil Singh, Dhaka, has now the real chance to take part in the real deal. So if you have a great idea, if you can really think, you can now do it and you can communicate with anybody. So I personally believe that uh, this is actually happening, this is good for us, or this opening is becoming flat. But the thing is that we often, as somebody was telling from Pran, we often believe that we are not worthy enough. For example, if now I put that, I made one of my friends make the video, and if I post this, post this video, a lot of our intellectuals will tell, oh my god, in Bangladesh you are talking about AI, come on, come on, it's, you are not Google, you are not Sundar Pichai, so we will accept. We have to understand and accept that we should talk, we should practice, it doesn't matter, I have no capacity to make Google Assistant, but I have to talk, and we should be able to freely give feedback, that is the thing they should change, and if somehow you can send it to Mr. Pichai or Google, they probably will change. So I think all the things are actually opening interesting and beautiful gates for us, our youth, and our life. Thank you so very much. So, uh,